There it's we like go. The Bye. I don't think I don't think we've ever started one of these with it uh, with it uh, being uh, perfectly timed. So anyway, uh, what's going on, uh, everybody? Little intro here. Uh, West Smith Variety Show got some cool guests on today. Um, this is the best I have for a sign today uh, because oh, and, it's, <laughs> and, and it's backwards. Look at that! I can be like Kilroy. Um, <laughs> And uh, I am, and today I am uh, in Frankfurt, Germany. I was on my way, uh, as I had talked about a little bit a few shows ago, I was on my way to India. I'm still on my way, but um, <laughs> I got uh, weather delays out of Houston. Damn you, Houston. And so um, we're going to give this a shot from Germany. Uh, we've got uh, Jen, as usual, in San Diego. We have uh, Kelly in New York. And then our guests I'll get to in a minute. I believe they're, they're sitting in Florida, and we'll talk more about specifics on that in a second. Um, a couple uh, announcements um, for uh, today uh, coming up. Well, let's see. This week, real quick, um, with some relevance to our guest, I've got a release called um, Every Move I Make uh, that's out on Dog Eat Dog, and today's guest has a whole bunch of stuff with the Dog Eat Dog fam there. We'll talk more about that. Um, so go check out that release. And I've also got, uh, that's a breakbeat uh, track, and then I've got a glitch hop or hip hop kind of track out on Adapted Records out of Australia, and uh, that's with uh, DJ EKL and uh, BBK on the mic, and uh, that's pretty cool. Those are all um, out there, so check them out. And then I had uh, one more uh, little announcement. What was it going to be? Oh, yeah, coming up. Uh, I have a full EP. Actually, it's our first one for the variety show, which I did, and uh, you'll see why it's a variety show when it comes out, so we'll save the secret for that. And the name of that one's Top Back, so that one's out. What's that? Uh, gosh, I always have to. Who's in charge of releases on this call? <laughs> I haven't believed about that one. I think it's on the 16th. The 14th. 14th. <laughs> Do we have to ask our guests what day is Monday? <laughs> anyway. 14th. Um, that's cool. And then, and then I have these shows uh, here in uh, this uh, mini tour with Red Bull here, which is why I'm in transit. And we'll maybe talk about that a little bit more. Those are all on the website as well. So check them out. So without uh, uh, further ado, let's get into today's show and um, the ups and downs of the music uh, world. And um, today's guests are uh, Fat Kids or I should say Nikki and Josh, otherwise known as Fat Kids. So with that, I believe their mics are live, and uh, you guys uh, just introduce yourselves and um, give a little bit of info on yourself, and then we'll kind of dig in to some other things. Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, of course, my name's Josh Tweezy, as most people know me. And, uh, I'm the one without the hair in the picture, if y'all don't notice. Just saying. <laughs> Um, so we'll go ahead and point that out and get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Nick? What's up? I'm Nikki. Nick, are you live? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. We're good. All right. Nikki, yeah, a.k.a. Yeah, we got you. Uh, the other half of the fat kids, and I am the one with some hair. <laughs> um, what do you want to know? 32? Woohoo! We're in Florida. Um, <laughs> Oh, we're going we're gonna to get all kinds of things. All right. Hey, this is uh, one thing, Nick, before I – or uh, you guys, before we get cracking, um, I always like to make sure that people can find you. So I know if you go out and Google, again, if you can at least make sure – I just have your logo on my phone. It's backwards, but that's the fat no, kids you're looking for. It's backwards. It's up right. It's, yeah. it's right. You're good. Sweet. So um, that's the fat kids are talking about as far as their musical endeavors, at least the ones that I know mostly. And so if you're out there looking around uh, while we're talking and doing things, then that's who you're looking for. And that's why they said hair and no hair. But um, <laughs> what? Uh, where else can they find you guys? Where else can people who want to hear your music find you guys outside of personal stuff and, and non-music things? What are like your places you send people to hear you and learn stuff about you? Well, one of the biggest spots is uh, SoundCloud, just soundcloud.com backslash fat kids. Uh, Your mic is a little low, just so you know. Yeah. Can you hear me now? 
Yep. Yeah, a little bit better. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Like the elbow. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can find us. Uh, a lot of our stuff is at SoundCloud.com uh, backslash Fat Kids. Uh, that's where a majority of our stuff is posted at the moment. You can also find us at uh, Heart This, uh, Beatport, uh, and actually on our website too, we actually have uh, some links for direct download at uh, FatKids.com. Oh, cool. And that's it's P H A T K I D Z, right? Yes, Correct. sir. Sweet. Yeah, and then I think um I was looking I was looking on your SoundCloud and I think your Facebook is like Fat Kids FL or something like that uh, the URL. But um yeah, get out there, kids, use your tools, Google, check it out. Um so uh, I guess so so um I, I so I'm even clear I guess to start off with you're are you both uh, in the same place or out out of Florida or tell us a little bit like what's the what's hometown what's hometown. Hometown is actually a small town called Inverness. It's in Florida. Um, I was actually born there. I think, JT, were you born in Inverness as well? No, actually, I was born in Hialeah. Oh, you should be with Geo then. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I'm not and, tan enough to make it down there, though. I'm not tan <laughs> enough. Um, I actually just moved away. What's that? I said, did he say tan enough or man enough? <laughs> tan, tan. I am man enough, let me tell you. <laughs> um, Guys. JT and I actually lived within like five minutes of each other for many years. And uh, back in September, I moved down to Delray Beach, which is about an hour north of Miami. So we are now four hours separate. Um, so we've had some challenges and... With that, but we were making everything uh, stick to the plan and still working hard together. We just sending music back and forth. Um, kind of sucks sometimes because I miss him. He's like m my brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I cry myself to sleep a few nights over this. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. So you met in you met in Inverness and grew up some, I guess, to a degree together. And then it's like, and then um, so you, as far as fat kids goes, you've been together the whole time pretty much near each other in Inverness, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've been, um, we started off as like separate Nikita and Tweezy actually met him at a house party and there was like a crate of some records and I was wondering whose those were. I had been playing for about a year at that point and he said that he, they were his and I asked him if he played and he said that he wasn't really playing anymore and I told him that he was about to start again and uh, <laughs> And that's where that all started. We started just spinning records at his house and became really good friends and then uh, moved out to or a label called Shoot to Ill out of Ocala and kind of started with Ableton and learning like the ropes of that and then kind of fell off for a little bit and then we got back together uh, working on music and then we started the Fat Kids like I think about three years ago. Right? Yeah. Three years ago? Oh, right about three years. Yeah. Cool, cool. So that explains a little why I was like, um, well, it explains a number of things for me now. Some lights just came on, pardon my, pardon my synapses. But um, I was thinking, for some reason, I was thinking Fat Kids had been around longer, but it's more that I just know that you two probably separately have done things together or maybe even DJed together, but not as the Fat Kids. Is that right? right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, that's right. All the lights have come on now. Okay. <laughs> cool. Up, down, up. <laughs> I keep going um, now, up. Now I, get the, now I get the tweezy and, and, and all this. When I was doing, um, you know, I met uh, Nikki, I guess, most recently, or, or, or most recently in terms of fat kids, I met you down in Miami. I know I've got a couple pictures with you, so I know for sure that was a few years ago at least. And then we've yeah. probably seen each other one or two in the past. And Josh, then I, I think I met you either real close to the same time I met Nikki in person down there. Um, but uh, one of the speaking of which, uh, synapses. One of the funniest things I remember about you two, I think it was it wasn't last year, maybe it was the year before. Is after the conference week and all that stuff was over, you you put post some picture on Facebook. It was like you guys hitchhiking, like on a hill. Uh, <laughs> no, that, that, that was that. actually um, a photo shoot that we had did, and that was just the idea. Just take the turntable and start walking and. 
hitch for a ride for the next place we were going. <laughs> the, don't let it lie. Miami <laughs> took everything out of us. We had to hitchhike home. That shit was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I figured it was set up, but but it's still pretty funny, man. So I I, I wish I had found that before we did this today. Um, maybe I can find it on my phone here while we're uh, uh, while we're talking. But um, but anyway, um, so so back to. Uh, uh, you were talking DJing pre Fat Kids, and so that was uh, on. Sounded to me like you were talking vinyl, as in vinyl records, 12 inch and turntables. Oh, yeah. of course. That's right. how I started. <laughs> That's how everybody old, should start, but we, we won't get into that. Tables. Yeah, right. Me too. Me too. Do you miss turntables at all? I still have my turntables. <laughs> yes. Not. Josh, you have yours. You miss them in the clubs? Yes. I actually do. Yeah. Um, if we had a preference, which it's not really going to happen, uh, we would play on, on tables all the time. It's Serato. But yeah, that's funny. I would too. You know, I, I would too. Like, it's kind of funny. Like, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys, like I have, you've, you've probably messed with every variation of, of digital vinyl system out there, whether it's Serato and the new record box 4.0 Pro, you know, XYZ, whatever. But, you know, whatever it is in between, I think... I think Final Scratch or something was like the very first effort from from NI or somebody way back in the day, right? With with help with the turntables being used as controllers with a computer. Was it called Final Scratch? I think it was Final Scratch, I believe so. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah, I think that is I th that's the first one I knew of, and, and so there's all these things that have happened in between, and, and of course, but yeah, I, I, I do I do miss it, but yeah, I mean, like you said, I think the the reality, I mean, there's there's people putting out new turntables, like what, what are those getting used for? <laughs> For looks. Not its real intentions, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I mean, when's the last time, when, seriously, for a paid gig, you know, or a commercial gig, when's the last time you saw, whether they were 1200s or not, like, in, in, a, in a club that you used? Oh, a lot of my friends do all vinyl sets at clubs, but they're, like, local little clubs, you know what I mean, where they're throwing small events. Yeah, yeah that's kind of... Back when I was still living in uh, Inverness, I would do local events, and it was more the crowd of the top 40 hip-hop stuff. But every event that I would do, I would actually bring my tables and set them up, and you know the other guys that were playing would bring their controllers. So um, any time I can't bring the tables, I prefer that for sure. Yeah. I found it interesting when I was working at United Records, though, a lot of the young people that were learning, they actually wanted to learn on vinyl first, which I think is, you should learn on vinyl first. So that was, like, encouraging to me to see a lot of the younger kids coming in and asking for turntables. Yeah. Buy records. Like, well, that's a, that is a good point. I mean, Nikki and Josh, I mean, do you, do you, I'm sure you have people that are just coming into the to the DJ world as well, and, and I imagine that, um, do you think it's a good idea for people to learn on turntables first? Always, always, you know, they really got to step back to the root of how it, you know, got going originally. It's not just jump into a digital age. You know, it's it's the touch. They need to understand the feel of what it, you know, what it was like playing that. Yeah, what else? What else? Any other, any other, because I do get, I mean, I've got this, um, it's kind of interesting. I have this uh, video game project that that's slowly, slowly coming out. Um, marketing and all that kind of stuff is starting. And um, the, the, the uh, the demographic for that is like 13 to 18 years old. It's like I don't know, 70, 80 percent, you know, male, and then the rest, and then female, 20, 25 percent, something like that. It's just a, I think it's a typical gamer youth gaming demographic. But you know, like yeah, when I think about it, like there's probably no chance those kids in that age group have ever really known anybody that has a turntable. So, like in terms of you know. If, if in the future they listen to some of these shows and whatnot, uh, or I chat with them, what would you, I mean, what are some of the reasons you would say to, to get started, uh, if you want to learn DJ, what are some of the reasons um, you would say to get started using turntables still, even though, you know, they're, they're, they're somewhat limited in terms of all the whiz-bang functionality? For me, it would be basically just learning how to basically beat count. I mean, you want to learn music through ear mm -hmm. um, instead of visually just looking at a screen and matching up BPMs and trying to match the red kicks with the you know the hats that are blue. Like you're, I feel like the digital world has kind of taken away like the basics of learning. To it me, is. what I, for me was DJing was learning how to beat count. You know, and I think. Uh, 
you know, Serato and stuff like that, you see most of the DJs are just staring at the screen the whole time. To me, it kind of takes it away. And uh, <laughs> I think if you learn from the basic fundamentals and then go up, you know, then you're solid. Yeah, I, I really can't. Ag I, she said it. <laughs> um, <laughs> in my mind. Um, is that how it's, it's going to work today? I'll just ask you a question. Pick one of you, you pretty much think the same. It, 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 it's do. scary. <laughs> it, it's very scary, man. I'm telling you. It's, it's at the point now she can finish my sentences. Same <laughs> back and forth. I mean, if you've ever gotten to know one of us, you automatically know the other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, was funny. it was funny before we um before we got on here we were talking on Facebook chatting and stuff and I was like hey what are you wearing he's like I'm wearing a fat kid shirt and I was like me too <laughs> so we had to do a little selfie plug to see if we were wearing like the same one <laughs> oh the same yeah same color no it looks like yeah. it's red and it's blue yeah cool yeah well I agree about the 1200s thing if you can 1200s you know they can be certainly clearly expensive and then I think there's some someone bought Panasonic I guess and or Panasonic bought whatever it was and, and I think they're reissuing a limited but those things are like they're super expensive I might get it wrong but I was I think I saw like a thousand US dollars or something like um, and I'm not sure they're out yet maybe more I don't know but yeah more they're four thousand for a pair what oh god I'll have to remortgage oh. my house <laughs> Nobody got that. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot of dough, but I do agree. I think I think you know, like all those things you said about learning to beat match and uh, all that, because um, it's it's a scary proposition, man. I, the you know the few times I've um, well I've used Serato quite a bit. That, that's my choice. Uh, to, that's my go-to if I use digital vinyl system, even with CDJs or whatever. But um. But I did get into the record box 4.0. Have y'all started using that at all yet? Like beyond just prepping like USB sticks for CDJs, like using it um like like in a you know just off the laptop in a live situation. No, I me personally I haven't. I mean I've had a situation like in Serato where uh, I don't remember if the needles were cutting out or something, and I've had to play on internal mode on Serato. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's a killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you gotta use like you gotta get all keyboard stroke with the, the Yeah, pitch you gotta like what is it like G and H or something to slow it down, your pitch control. I'm like Yeah. <laughs> that, it was that, a challenge, that, but we got it done. <laughs> that's a spill right there. I've had that happen a couple times. But um yeah, that uh you know, if you if you do like those things, the um I just recently I mean we've all we've all used record box probably for, for a while to prep USB sticks, but I just recently Bought the uh, bit the bullet and and got the uh, 4.0 uh, Pro DJ version to just try out at a few <clears throat> things and um you can plug that right into depending on what kind of laptop you're using maybe but I know I use MacBook Pro so you can plug um you can plug that directly into the CDJ's uh, 2000 Nexus anyway and um you don't need any audio card no hardware or nothing and so that's always been one of the issues for me whether I was traveling or local doesn't really matter it's just you know that whole like going in and, and DJ etiquette and setting up like you know a lot of times you, you know most of the time you don't get a sound check to go put all your Serato gear you know and set it up and then you're doing it while the other DJ is transitioning and all that jazz right so you can you can kind of get rid of most of that now with Rekordbox DJ 4.0 hmm. yeah I'll have to yeah. look into that I'm really not even familiar with it yeah, it's it's pretty pretty you know pretty neat just to just to throw it out there. I just like within the last month I actually actually got it and, and I was surprised it actually worked, but it does. So anyway, apparently those apparently the CDJ Nexus have a have audio cards. Maybe they have for a long time, but they they apparently have all cards in them, which takes the place of whatever tractor and the Serato you know physical box was doing. So you don't need that anymore. So it's kind of cool, uh, but um. What's, what's the price point um, on that? Speaking of, yeah, right, right. It's, it's, it's nice sounding for sure, right? Um, speaking of uh, DJ, what do you guys have coming up um, in terms of shows? I know you got a couple. I checked out your Facebook and, and that stuff. Um, tell us about a few shows coming up. Uh, let's. See. Where can people catch you live? This this Saturday, actually, we're playing for the pre WMC party for Dog Eat Dog Records in Orlando, Florida, at uh, Peak. Which used to be actually called Sweet B in downtown Orlando. So we're playing that for Psy Dog. Um, we're playing with uh, Agent K and Bella, Super Groover, Steph, Funk Baby, Kemper, and oh Kemper, 
and ourselves. <laughs> Oh, and Rob. Like, uh, uh, is that the doggy? <laughs> How are you going to forget Rob? <laughs> <laughs> so, I was about to ask Amazing, about amazing promotions. They're, they're putting this on, too. We got a name drop. We got a name drop. <laughs> well, we, could, we, could, we could name drop all throughout. I will tell you, this may be a fun fact for you. This is the fifth episode, and I'm pretty sure this is the farthest we've made it without killing the PG-13 rating. <laughs> that's, I, that's because I was... I was told to mind my manners. I'm just saying. I was told to mind my manners. So I am. And Josh, and Josh, and Josh you really don't have to. That, that it's kind of it's kind of a joke because ever since I ever since I was working on the video game project, they it's it's more just related to the game. They had a they had to learn you know just about the rule book on keeping PG-13 ratings in video games. So it's not really that big a deal for YouTube. But I thought it was funny because. When you post uh, one of these like recordings we're doing, when you post it to YouTube, it, it'll ask you to verify if the content you know is 18 and up or whatever like that. So it's just always kind of a running joke. So feel free to say whatever you want. <laughs> every every show has ended up in the gutter at some point during it. <laughs> well, well, we'll keep but, uh, it PG-13 so the younger generation can watch. Just saying. <laughs> we, don't we, don't to, we don't want them to not be able to learn about why they should. Um, why they should start with turntables. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Also, so that's the, that's a show we have coming up this Saturday, and then um, the following weekend is WMC. So Saturday, I'm going to be playing a. It's an all female uh, ten year anniversary party for some of the. I believe it's like a group of Miami girls called the Geishas. So it's the 10-year anniversary party. I'll be that, uh, there on Saturday and then Sunday for the Doggy Dog Records pool party, closing party, which I will see you guys at. <laughs> yeah, I think Dan and I are going to come to the one on uh, the Geisha's party, and then Wes will be there for... Okay, cool. Hey, speaking of which, remember you had we had spoke about that a little bit. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The girl that's doing it, or... They kind of uh, spoke to me about it. She said they kind of just all just play together. It's not like set time slots or anything. So I think maybe we could meet up and see if you could like slide in or something and do even if it's like a thirty minute set. Like that would be dope. Cool. All right. Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be there passing out balls no matter what. So what? <laughs> no blue balls. <laughs> let the let the. Uh, <laughs> Let the Miami shenanigans begin. Oh my gosh. I think they already have. I like how when Josh comes on, it's like uh, like the Barry White. Do you hear him? Like, his voice. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Dude, you got some baritone rocking. There's no question about that. I am yeah. the baseline in the Fat Kids tracks. I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 nice. When when um when are you uh when are you coming when are y'all leaving um Miami? What, how long are you gonna be down there? I'm actually just gonna be there for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, um yeah. How about you, Josh? Same. I am still gonna try to make it down there. Unfortunately, uh this might be another year where I might not make it, but I'm gonna do my best to make it all the way down there. Won't this be your first Miami, not Miami, but Miami Music Week, if you go? Yes. If I do make it, it will pop my Miami Music cherry. How can we get you there? <laughs> what, what do we need to do to get you there? A, a big, big Twinkie. That's what I mean. A big <laughs> Twinkie. You're going to be like me, dude. You're going to be like me, because I'm not going to be there until... I'm be there until um, I don't like your black balls. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Can you see these again? Yes. Uh, are those your blue balls? Those are the black are balls. Blue balls. Well, since I'm not there with Jen, I can't tell when the camera, what it's on. Yes, so, it's on. Anyway, you can see it. Right on. The, um, yeah. That's my blue balls for, my, that's my blue balls for Miami. Um, that's also my plug for Rob. I couldn't, because uh, I'm not going to be there either, so I, I won't see I won't see either of you anyway. So, well, I'm even more glad we got to kind of hang out here and do this because I won't get to see you guys down there. But uh, Jen and Jen and um, Kelly will definitely be down there, so you'll uh, whoop it up. That'll be cool. So, um, cool. Outside of the DJ stuff, um, 
couple things I thought y'all would be awesome to talk about is one is <laughs> you're like your roots for sure are in Florida and um, and you've been there the whole time so um, some about that and, and I guess whichever you want to talk about first but I'm interested how how you kind of went from your uh, DJing into the production side of things I heard you mention Ableton um, I'm an Ableton guy as well um, but just you know kind of how how did DJing lead to that for you and kind of a little history on that and and then maybe some of the cool this some of your favorite stuff that you've put out anyway well from I mean basically in my eyes it was you keep playing and you can you'll play and you'll push your limits on what you can and can't do like playing live and then you just want to take it to a different level so I started to look into production and let's be honest, the first time you open live, it's like crack. I got addicted. <laughs> I have a problem. I need therapy. So, <laughs> and it just it just kind of took off from there. You know, it's it, I, I basically locked myself away for hours on end, and you know, I'd I'd sit with Nikki, and we would just constantly, you know, just beat it out. Right. We would beat constantly out. write shitty songs. <laughs> oh my God, the shit songs we would write. Good I was like, Lord. Wait, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> what does this do? No, no. Are uh, are either of you are either of you uh, trained musicians of any sort? No, I, I'm not. I c I couldn't play the first instrument to be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not. I just I'm just curious. I I think you need to ask people because I don't think I think that um uh, you know, it, it seems anymore. You know, you can certainly make music. There's a lot of tools out there if you put in the work to learn about music. But you certainly don't have to come from a professionally or classically trained background. Oh, right. you can even I got kicked out of flute in high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't you know, play with flutes in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I played the clarinet. So <laughs> I played the sax. I'm just saying for like a day, and then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what was no, your I mean, first what was your first commercial release? Not not as in you know the top forty, but as in for sale. Do you remember? Um yeah, it was was it You Can't Hide? Yeah, actually on Tommy Who Records, uh Yeah. That, that was the first track we ever wrote. And um we we hit up Tommy and Tommy just he really dug it and Next thing you know, there it went. Unexpectedly. <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of weren't expecting it right away. It was one of those, hey, check us out here. Check this out. You know, this is a pretty cool track. We're new to this shit, you know. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, there it was on the label, popped up. You know, I think we made a fortune off of it, Nick. What do we make, like a dollar fifty? <laughs> you know? So. <laughs> we never got on quarters from that. We never got on that exchange, man. <laughs> I'm, taking, I'm taking on the court over 28 cents. <laughs> I mean, so no, it's, it's uh, so that obviously, that obviously wasn't vital. No, <laughs> well, that was strictly digital. Yeah, when, that that was digital. When was that? Two thousand and eleven. All right. Okay. Hold on. No, no, no. No. That was like two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yeah, because that's when I was living in Lakeside. Remember? Oh yes, yes. Okay, two thousand nine. Nice, nice. Yeah, that was a long what time about, ago. So as Fat Kids, that would have been what about three years ago? First release. First release we did as Fat Kids. What was that? Um, this is bad when we have wrote so much we can't even remember our <laughs> first release. I'm. This is horrible. Honestly, whenever we first started, we just we did a ton of edits that we were just doing on SoundCloud, and then I, I don't really know our first. <laughs> <laughs> I can check my iTunes. There you go, dude. She's gonna do our research we're right so, there. She's, up, she's gonna go Google go. that ish right there. I mean, Not even yeah, all the so on iTunes. I'm just so, saying. I have, I, I'm gonna say I have a lot of Fat Kids tunes in my iTunes. I don't have. Uh, to how many? How many you got? The roundabout number. Uh, forty-two. Shit's you weird. Have that many songs? I got 130. Well, send some away. <laughs> <laughs> let Let me see. I'm kind of interested and now. What our first track was. It's definitely more than 
35. Let's oh, see. Do you have more than 35? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's yeah, quite that's a few. what I have. Let me see here. All right. That's just Bport. You know, I was just looking. I was just looking to look there on Bport. But um, um, and and I will say on that note, and on Bport, uh, your remix of uh, my track "Do You" is currently your number one track. <laughs> is it? All right, that's what I'm talking about. And it's awesome. I mean, it's at the top. It's at the top of your, uh, you know. So, That's, so you're basically you're basically name dropping you're basically name dropping daily for me. I appreciate that. Yeah. You're very welcome, my friend. Very, That's very welcome. You know, and the I didn't, I didn't realize that. And the and the three years of doing like our music and all of our releases that we have done on Beatport, we still haven't broke top ten, but that was the closest we got to eleven. So, we were oh, was it? To busted top ten, but. Oh, nice. Uh, maybe maybe we should have bought our tracks and then we would have done it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, you know. Do we need to go to commercial? <laughs> well, I will. I, I think it's funny because I don't know. I don't know that I um. I I don't think I've ever bought one of my tracks except for when I had to. Um, I remember one time I was trying to figure out how to use the the overly complex um B port DJ mixes section. And you have to buy, you know, like all the music. Oh, yeah. Which is fine. I mean, I understand from copyright and labels and all that. So you have to buy it and then, you know, so it's official and then do the mix and upload it. So I still have never done one Beatport DJ mix because I just, <clears throat> that's just too much to get my head around, like keeping track of where I bought it or when I bought it or what I made or right. what someone else made or promos. And, you know, it's a mess, right? Like, have you ever tried to do that on, on the Beatport DJ mixes thing? No, I, I haven't uh, done yeah. the DJ mixes on Beatport, no. But as far as the whole buying your track, I'm not going to lie. I did one time. I got to a show. The fucking wave yeah. wouldn't work. It would not play. <laughs> so I got on my phone. I downloaded the MB3 and sent it to my USB via a little cable you plug into your phone just so I can put it on the CDJ hey. just to play it. That's awesome, dude. Hey, look, I don't I mean, I mean, don't think there's really a problem if you, you, know, you want to go on there and buy your track. It's kind of like... It's like that old question, you know, do you vote for yourself as president or whatever? I mean, why not? I would buy it once. You believe in yourself, buy, buy your stuff once. But I think the problem um, that, that you're alluding to and we're laughing at, if anyone's clear who's, who's not got their head buried in the music game, um, is uh, there, there are people who, who and, you know, like pay people to buy their tracks. Um, that part I don't understand. I don't understand, like, you know, I get messages from people, and 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 then other folks send them to me and laugh as well. Where it's like, someone's asking that someone has a track out, and they're asking the person, "Please buy it, and I'll pay you back." <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I wouldn't really sleep all that well at night. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't feel. So, I don't know if I feel good about getting into the top ten like that. Would you? Yeah. Like, hey, where's yeah. my two dollars and forty nine cents? I'm still waiting on my check. <laughs> Kind of like buying it, not buying it. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, I I think I think I figured out our first track. All right, what was it? If some, correct me if I'm wrong. Let's see. April eighth, two thousand fourteen. It was side to side, featuring mixtape Mac. That was a DJ Dynasty Dynasty. track that we did for oh, Break yeah. It's my birthday. Can you play, play a little bit of it. Are you on Beatport? Can you play a little bit of the clip? It'll come through. We can hear it. Let's see. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. This tech-savvy world, and this is how we're if, if, if every topic we do, we're like the delay answer show. Like, if every topic we ask each other, it takes us like 10 minutes to circle back and get the answer. <laughs> no, 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 that's the original. That's the original. <laughs> Shout out to Dynasty on the original track, just saying. Yeah, I put that in my uh, Festival of Friends or the Female Festival of Friends mix, and and Nikki was on that too. I don't think I go on B port enough. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> you, you made us run off, Nick. You made us run off. Come on. That's crazy. You don't go on B port enough. <laughs> 
So it shows you how much I go on, and I'm like, how do you play the next track? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, folks. We've inadvertently confirmed that Nikki is not buying her own tracks. <laughs> I, I, I got it. There you go. Sorry. That was a piece of it. Awesome. It's got that roll. Um, that was very short. Did you have it, Kelly? I, I have it. Hold on. Go pick it up, kids. Put that put that in the top one hundred again. Let's put that back in the top one hundred, everybody. It it needs um, to be there. It really does. Just actually, saying. I think it's up for free now, JT. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, on SoundCloud, it says buy on Bport, but yeah. Go to SoundCloud.com. Uh, we'll <laughs> it's in our fat pack. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on SoundCloud. That is cool. There, there's that fat pack there. It's like five fat tracks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Generally, we do. We try to do about five or six of them. Um, the fat packs, uh, when we remix those, is a lot of them is just simple, basic re edits, re rubs. You know that, yeah. that we used for our sets, um, and then after a little bit of time, we just give them away all in one shot and let everybody else use them. Which we need to do this week for Miami for people. <laughs> yes, actually, yes. Thank you, Nick. We uh, we might need to put another fat pack together. I actually have. I still have a load of uh, or like a list of tracks that I played last year in Miami that we never even just put up. So we should probably do that. Oops. So yes. We're here. They we're getting to hear some good back office struggles of, of, of popular DJ duos from Florida. Hey, uh, speaking, of, speaking of Florida, give us um, tell, give us a little la, – la, two weeks ago we had uh, Brian Malara and Standar from Omega Squad out here in San Diego, California, or I should say over there, and, um, and they gave us a pretty good rundown, a lot of which was new to me, of kind of the Southern California scene. Um, maybe you guys could give us, like, from your perspective and, and – Maybe just, maybe the three or four years of the Fat Kids era, let's say, um, and feel free to throw any props in there. But kind of so people can get a good feel for some Florida history, at least from your perspective, um, you know, musically speaking. I think that's always interesting. Hmm. Where do you want to Fire. start? Fire away. Whatever. You know? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, go ahead, Nick. Ladies first. <laughs> I'd say uh, for me. Like not not really right now, but starting out um, the scene that I was the scene in Florida um, was more out of Tampa. Like the breaks that I was listening to, uh, like a lot of Shiraz, Santana, D DJ FBI, Mondo. That's like I don't know if you guys know of the Amphitheater in Tampa in Ebor. You guys ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so to me, even before I was like DJing, that's kind of where I would go to. <clears throat> to hear everyone play, and then as I started getting into it more, realized it was everywhere, <laughs> and like Orlando, and then uh, Miami, I really didn't get into that much until like 2008 when I went to my first WMC, and uh, compared to now, there's kind of, you know, the little cliques everywhere that do their own parties, and I don't. I don't really know much about North Florida, though. I haven't been to North Florida too much. That's all I got right now. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. But like Tampa, I mean, I've I've always known, um, you know, uh, Tampa for having a good a good scene around it, just around electronic music in general. I mean, and nowadays, mm -hmm. um, even if it's not breaks, you know, you see all the, <clears throat> you definitely see coverage on whatever Insomniacs doing, you know, whatever big event or something like that. So it's clearly a Clearly, a, a population there for it. Um, what about you, Josh? You were going to say from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, you know, from my perspective, it was it was the same thing. It was Tampa constantly, you know, with the same the same producers and DJs. Mondo. See, this is why, man. When we we basically grew up together at the same time, so it was the same <laughs> thing. But you know, and then we'd shoot over we shoot over to Orlando, and you know, when I was in Orlando, I'll, I'll never forget the first time that I heard Icy. And just, good Lord, man, there's a reason they call him the king, okay? Right. You know, it's just he is so innovative with his sounds and the style and the pattern and just, dude, he, he blew my mind. 
He really did the first time, and it's <laughs> it's been all breaks for me since. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no question there's no question when I first heard I probably I, I I'm pretty sure I was exposed to Breaky through him, and 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 that definitely um, I, I would agree with you on all those things. So there's no doubt about that. I I got exposed to electronic music before. Breakbeat. It was more in like UK hardcore and so even Gabber and some things that had nothing to do with a breakbeat. But um, I would totally agree with you on the break side there with IC and, and the whole base, whatever it's become now, and all that stuff. He had a great show out here in San Diego. That was really cool. He had a good show at a little club out here. That was pretty cool. Um, awesome that he's been jamming out that long, you know? Super cool. Um, oh, yeah. What about so like one of the things we we that the that we were talking about on the West Coast side was a huge influence is is like these desert parties and Burning Man, and I'm curious like has that ever really, you know, it's obviously the other side of the country, but does Florida have an equivalent or or just sort of a kind of an outdoor side of the scene like like these are basically you know groups of people that go out and camp you know you don't have deserts in Florida but you got a lot of flat space <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> one of yeah. um, yeah. and, and it's actually one that we've played for the past three years. If you guys are familiar with Earth Dance, only this year I heard about it, but no, I wasn't okay. part of that. What, well, it's actually that? Uh, worldwide, but they've been doing that in Florida. I think maybe four or five years, if I'm not mistaken, and that's actually on private property of this family. That um, it's is it like a ranch? It's like a ranch. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a ranch. It's like four days camping out, and they are a mixture of uh, bands to DJs um, to yoga sessions to artists to <laughs> you'll see lots yeah, of interesting they, stuff. They, they they cover <laughs> everything out there, <laughs> everything, which is great, you know. And and like a four day span is, you know, just to see all the amazing and raw talent that's actually out there. Yeah. yeah, but I'm gonna tell you right now. We uh, the first year we went, we decided to do the whole, you know, okay, we'll get there, we'll get there on Thursday, you know, we'll leave on Sunday. It's oh, cool, sure. it's cool. Yeah, three hours of sleep in four days. I'm mm -hmm. too old for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, you probably didn't hear, but that's what we were talking about, man. These desert parties, they just don't stop, dude. They just, it's, yeah. it's like. Uh, I'm not sure I was ever young enough for that. <laughs> I guess it's my I'm not sure if I'm too old. I don't know if I. I don't know if I would have ever done that, man. It, 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 three days straight like that. So that's like uh, that. That that's something I definitely consider another side of the planet. Yeah. How uh, how were those sandstorms, by the way, out there at Burning Man? How did those treat you? Oh, it was crazy, man. It was so crazy. Like that was, that was out there like this year uh, it with so me. Funny. What is she laughing? <laughs> Yeah, there's a picture. Oh, she knows something. Hold on, Wes. She knows something, the way she's laughing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, here it is. I just, I just remember, it, have you ever seen um, Malcolm in the Middle, where they go to Burning Man, and they have the air streamer, and they're sitting out, and they have, like, the AstroTurf, and they think that, the like, the Malcolm in the Middle parents are a part of the art installation. So I kind of felt like that one day with Wes because he has an air streamer and we're both sitting out there like in the lawn chairs and we're we're looking out into the desert and it's just a tornado but the the way that his his um air streamer was it would it would block the wind and we would look out to my tent and, you, and my tent was like this <laughs> <laughs> and we were just like oh my god but we were just sitting there sitting there being do you remember this, that? This is 100% true. She's telling the truth. I mean, it, my t I was like, my tent's going to leave. It's going to go. And it just <laughs> all the way to the ground, all the way to the other side. And it was fine. I, I, was, I was looking for the video of it to explain to you, Josh, uh, real quick, and answer for that. Um, I think it's one on my Instagram, but it's um, I basically it's me filming a, a motorized cupcake. And, uh, <laughs> now you really sparked my interest. This is a cupcake. Yeah, dude. It's uh, <clears throat> I think it's on my Instagram. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to find it real quick while while we're talking. This will be one of those ten minute circle back deals. <laughs> that was that, that was the best day and the worst day of my life with a motorized cupcake. Now, Before that, it was how, awesome. How could the, how could there be any worse day with a big motorized cupcake? Well, that, that is like awesome. I. 
I lost it after that. It, it basically you get into this dust storm where you can't see anything, and me and Wes got separated at the point of the cupcake. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. it it's it's le it's legit. So, um, <laughs> well, while I'm looking for this video, but you were talking about in terms of the Florida um, music scene, what would you say? Like, um, what, what's kind of the, the the major styles in electronic music that are that are kind of like really happening in Florida right now? You know, because it's from everyone I've talked to, it's like breakbeats falling off trees. You know, however many years ago, and then and like you were saying, kind of, you know, it's smaller of the scenes now. But um, what what's kind of like I don't know, dominating for lack of a better word in terms of electronic music sounds in Florida? Oh, as of right now, a lot a lot of it to me from what I see is trap. You know, just real bass heavy house. And, you know, things along that line. Yeah. To be honest, I really don't go out anymore, so I don't know. <laughs> buddy, buddy. Buddy, buddy. Well, that's a good, that's a fantastic segue. What, what do you do if you're not? I know y'all are producing, you DJ when you play gigs, and then so outside of that, while I'm scrolling around looking for my cupcake over here, um, what, uh, how, how do you spend your time that's not music related? That's. Uh, uh, um, since down here, I'm, I'm actually I work five days a week doing massage therapy until seven o'clock at night, and then I kind of come home and hang out with my greyhounds and my girlfriend. And right. other than that, just kind of have that whole party lifestyle is really settled for me. Um, you know, I go out and play our gigs and stuff, work on music, um, like to spend a lot of time with family, go to the beach. <laughs> Well, it's easy when you live like a block from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's well, the that's life I'm living. Yeah, it's more settled. and well, It's actually helping me be a little bit more focused on the music, though, from you know not really going out anymore. I was going to say, it's probably kind of nice, right? And I know <clears throat> um, I saw, like, uh, uh, we always, we always um, informally have our health and fitness section of the show, and I saw you... Um, a lot of posts along the lines of learning a lot about foods and just sort of healthy foods and that kind of stuff. And um, mm -hmm. I think that's – I think – I mean, I, I enjoy it too, and I think everyone on this call does. Except maybe Josh. I don't know, man. I don't know I don't know how you feel about that. What you trying to say, Wes? What you trying to say? Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm lean. No, I'm lean. But, Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Joke. <laughs> I remember a joke. I remember a, a, a joke. Somebody told me it, no. We were like chatting or something, and, and I think it was like a, a public Facebook comment. And I commented on a nice looking recipe there that Nikki had posted, and I think you said something about ribs or something. So it was more of a joke on those lines. I really have no idea. But um, but but Nikki, on um, on on your side, what are like what's been um like some of the influences to kind of um you know learn about I guess just foods and healthy eating. I think it's always interesting where people, how people get turned on because yeah. I didn't until you're, like you're five vegan. years ago. You're vegan now, right? I'm vegan now. I'm on like, um, I think it's like day 65. It's very new. Um, which I would have never thought I would have went that route ever. Uh, my background, I'm Colombian, so <coughs> cheese and meat is very involved in like the Latin culture and foods and um, how that kind of started was like a little bit over a year ago, I kind of just cut out fast food. I mean, I was out, I'd eat whatever and drink a lot and kind of just lead in a really unhealthy lifestyle. And especially like being on the road and traveling, you're just kind of grab and go, whatever, you you know. Um, so I cut that out. And then uh, back in November, just did some uh, blood testing with high triglycerides and they're trying to tell me that I need to cut out red meat and alcohol and carbs and stuff like that so I was cutting out the red meat and then my girlfriend's daughter is actually a raw vegan and she was coming to stay with us for two weeks um, my girlfriend was going to which you're from San Diego right so have you heard of OHI the Optimum Health Institute I have no Okay, so she's been going there for about like seven years now, so her daughter was coming here to kind of prep her before she went because when she's there for the week, it's kind of mostly juicing and all raw. So she's like, you know, do you want to try it out? And, you know, to be supportive, I was like, sure, you know, let me try it. And 
kind of from the get-go, I was like, if I don't like it, I'm not going to eat it, and I can't say that I'm going to last on this more than three days. <laughs> and yeah. it was like 65 days ago. So um, just within the two weeks of doing it, you know, just a dramatic change in, like, how I was feeling, and then kind of when she was in San Diego, I had to do it on my own. So I kind of plugged myself into, like, learning about, you know, veganism and why people do it, and then kind of got in the whole ethical part of it and what they do <laughs> to the animals. And right, right. So it's kind of just yeah, changed well, a lot. That's a whole other subject. Yeah, right? I won't go into all that. <laughs> no, no, I mean it's cool. Like I, I, I uh, you know, I can't say that I, I can say that I'm into any one style of eating, um, you know, in particular. But I did, like I said, probably five or six years ago. I got into, I got into probably first, but I wasn't. Um, like today, I, am I walking? I walk around like one seventy today, which is. Um, which is good for me, and then, but I was like 195. I tell people I was 195. Look at my frame, and they're like, "Wow," you know. <laughs> so it's just like um, I had to do something about it. Kind of like you were saying, I, I had, uh, you know, I, I had uh, uh, some blood tests and stuff like that, and they're just like, you know, you got to change this, that, and the other. And I think it's kind of funny because I really just had never done that before. And I me think <laughs> I think these things are probably all things that, um, especially for younger kids, like you know, not to be like parents and stuff, but I think. I think if I had gone and done those kind of tests when I was in my, you know, maybe in my 20s, they probably would have said the same thing, you know, but I just never did it. So, so, so it was a long time before I, you know, really was aware, I think, in, in terms of a, you know, a factual analysis of my, my body and, and what I was doing to it in a good or bad ways, and then um, deciding to try to change that. <clears throat> so... But yeah, yeah. I, kind of, I ignored it for a long time. I, I was the same. I didn't go to the doctor and get stuff checked out. I was like, I don't want to know what's wrong. You know, I'm fine. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. what, was the, what was the what was the hardest thing? Um, uh, cupcakes was cupcakes was mine, man. But what was the? I have such a sweet tooth. It's terrible. What was the hardest thing out of you know the couple few months that you've been rocking with it? What was the hardest thing to um, that you missed the most? Like like an ingredient or something, you know? Um, for me, it's like like cheeses. Like I love like different exotic cheeses, and that's probably the hardest one. And um, so you, those aren't in. If you're vegan, I guess you can't eat cheeses, huh? No dairy. Dairy. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously, I don't stick to that rule, but, but yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be tough. Uh, that would be a tough one for me. I like my cheese and wine still a little bit, but for sure. yeah. Cool. Um, and then I think the biggest one is, you know, like I said, my culture background is Colombian. And so when I went home to visit a couple of weeks ago, it was the first time I had seen my family since I started all of this. And Spanish people can tend to get offended <laughs> if you don't eat their food. Ah. So my mom, <laughs> my mom made this, this meal, which they call a bandeja paisa, which is like pork and you know, the beans and rice and plantains and avocado and, like, you know, all those things that are healthy, but then there's the cheeses yeah. on arepas, and I, she was like, here, eat this, and I was like, yeah. no, I'm not eating that, and it, she was kind of getting upset a little bit, and uh, it's kind of hard. I didn't want to offend her, but, I'm, you know, she kind of understands at the same time I'm doing this to, like, better myself health-wise, and so she was supportive after, like, three days, but up for, like, three days she was like, eat this, and I was like, no, I'm not eating this shit anymore. That's a really good point, though, you know, um, because I know that, I know that um, you've said it, so, you know, you, you feel better, um, I think you feel, you feel also just a little mentally better, because you feel like you're at least doing something for yourself all the time, uh, which is kind of nice, even if it's not a health benefit, you know, a little bit of the psychology part of it, and you're right, that's tough when you're around other people that, um, you know, that's family, so it takes some time, but it is tough when, you know, I guess the equivalent with just friends is, you know, like egging you on to eat, you know, me, like egg, egging me on to eat like the, the buffalo wing or whatever, you know, and it's like, look, I, you know, I don't, I don't need it, you know, and, and it's also just not good for you, bro, so, you know, it, yeah. you know people don't want to hear that, though, you know, and so, I mean, this isn't a health podcast, I'm not turning into that, but, but, uh, <laughs> but I do know that for me, I've enjoyed it. And uh, I think it make a difference in anybody's life. And I don't. I, I've yet to meet anybody that doesn't like like to do things better and just you know have more energy and feel better about life. You know, and maybe if you're 15 years old, you're indestructible. But 
Um, it doesn't. It doesn't stay that way. So uh, I, I do think it's. 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 Uh, I think it's great to hear people who have whatever time it is that they kind of cross those paths and whoever helps them find that and, and uh, you know sure. best in sticking. JT's on his way. JT is on his way as well. Cool man. Said, uh, oh, I'm. I'm in this. I'm not vegan. I'm just, I, I still eat everything else. What's up? But, but no, no, no. I mean, you know, I I agree. I'm so happy for Nick with the whole vegan thing, and I, it's it's working out great. The healthy, and she, uh, yeah, she kind of inspired me to start eating a little bit better and stuff like that. I didn't go full on vegan, just saying. But I did. I, I got upwards. Uh, you know, I was I was right about three twenty, three twenty five, and now I'm down to right at three hundred. So I'm slowly on my way. So. Cool, man. No, that's that's cool. I mean, look, I you know I do like to talk about it for a while on here because, uh, like I said, a few of those other things. But also, I, I know one of the challenges for me was I, I just didn't have a lot of people around me that knew anything, you know, and and it was more peer pressure I think than anything getting yeah. in the way. And they didn't mean badly. They just they just you know it's just it's just the way I think especially a lot of America is. They just don't um, they don't really understand a lot about food and health and exercise, and, and so for whatever reason. It, it, it makes it harder, you know. But um, but yeah, that's cool. That's good to hear with both of you. And I and I know Kelly and Jen and I talk about it here and there. Jen, Jen, Jen was kind of a like wait for person for a while, but uh, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'll see that bicep. Show me. Come on, pump it up. Let me see it. Yeah. Back. I got big shoulders. That's not a shoulder. Oh, Kelly Swanson over there. <laughs> I feel like I haven't said that, that's what. <laughs> Well, another thing, another thing, another thing I was gonna, another thing I was, uh, was gonna talk to y'all about, which I hadn't really gotten too much on, on the last ones, but um, and it kind of segues off of uh, the health and fitness hour <laughs> for 15 minutes is um, is uh, technologies like it, it's you know uh, we've been around long enough. It's it's affected us. We've we've everyone on this call has almost bridged that gap a little bit between. Um, you know, for lack of a better term, analog and digital. You know, both both in music is where we might would associate it with the most. But I know, like with a lot of the health and fitness stuff, man, it is so easy nowadays. You know, when you think about your phone or your watch or whatever, man, it's so easy to kind of carry your knowledge with you. You know, don't you think? And um, yeah, for sure. I, don't, I don't know if you have tools of the trade, but on the technology side of the world, like what what some things y'all are into, or like whether it's music or outside of music. Well, anything, anything technology-wise, I'm all about it. Everything from, like you said, watches to <laughs> laptops to, man, you name it. My wife hates me because I buy everything that's out. <laughs> she hates so it. You, so you're like a nerd. You, are you nerd? I am. I am, the, I am the most overweight nerd. Well, I, can't, I might not go that far, but <laughs> I, I, I am a tech junkie. I am. I'm not the smartest at a, being a tech junkie, but I am a tech junkie. What what's that thing that you bought from Amazon? You tell the lady whatever she can like oh. open the garage door or something. Oh, what is her name? Not Amazon Echo. It's, uh, Echo. Oh, you have the Echo. Yeah. All I, right. I forgot her name now. Siri. No, not Echo. Siri. That's an iPhone. What is that? The Amazon Echo. Yeah. Oh, brother, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> you can uh, you can walk in and and Alexa. That's what her name Alexa, is. Alexa. That's her Alexa. Yeah. You, you can walk in the house and just say, Alexa, lights on. It'll turn the house lights on. You walk in and you, Alexa, how many how many cups is in this recipe? And it'll tell you. Alexa, what time is it in Germany? She'll tell you. Anything, man, good. Where, where was this thing when I was in school? By the way, what time is it in Germany? So when you tell me to Google it, I could just ask, ask Alaska instead. Yeah, that's it. You just, Alexa. and she, Alexa. Yeah. It's yeah, I asked her. Theory. Yeah. Yeah, I asked her out on a date the other night, and she said she didn't understand the question. My wife got kicked <laughs> out of it. I asked Wes what time it was in Germany, and he told me to Google it. <laughs> what time is it? I ain't Googling it. What time is it? He'll, he'll tell you to Google it. I have, oh, an app, in Germany. I have an app. I have an app on my phone. Hold on. I have an app on my phone. I'm not bullshitting you. Like, there's everything. Everything everywhere. This one may not be that surprising, but look, I'll, I'll hold it up. It's 3:35 a.m. <laughs> yeah, so oh my gosh! Good. I have all. Yeah. So it, what it does is check, check it out. It's called Time Scroller. I'm gonna put this up here because you know you'd be surprised how many people hold, actually ask. Hold, hold it still. Thing. Anyway, what, it's called Time Scroller because you can scroll. You you can scroll like to other days or other hours today, so that you know like, okay, I got a meeting. You know, 
uh, in six hours, what time will it be? I'm in Germany. What time will it be in yeah, Orlando? So they call it time scroller. So it's not just like a clock. It's like helping you, you know, like do do that that kind of translation. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's it's sweet. I've had that thing for a few years, and it's and it's it saved me quite a bit. Because then you can, you know you set your alarm at the right time, like I did tonight, so I can get up, and then you know and do this, you know. But um, yeah, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm a tech nut. Hey, I found this video. I found the. I'm sorry. This is the, the <laughs> ten minute. Ten minute loop. I, I also sent you the picture of the of the hitchhiking picture, Wes. It's in your. I, we can't see it. Pull back a little bit. Oh, I gotta wait till it comes up. It was it was totally gray, not because of the dust in the thing, but it was totally uh, gray. But I also hey, sent you, you a picture know, of the hitchhiking. You know how you have the my my tech thing. My tech thing is um, other than that time scroller thing. You know how you have those uh, catalogs of like uh, weird things you can buy on airplanes. Like they always have that stuff. Love and, those. Yeah. So I'm like reading. <laughs> I'm like reading this thing. And there's a lawnmower. There's a lawnmower now that. Basically works like a Roomba inside your house. Yeah. And it, <laughs> Scary. That's awesome. Yeah, right. Rain, rain or shine, twenty four seven. This thing you can just set it out, and I guess it has like some kind of perimeter. I don't know how it does it. You know, maybe maybe you give it a plot of your property or whatever. But anyway, it runs. It's like electric too, That's and it just runs scary. around the yard. Oh, it's it's the worst can job you, ever. That is so good. I love it. Can you send me the link to that uh, <laughs> mower? That way I ain't got to mow my yard no more. <laughs> so I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I've, yeah. seen, I've, seen, I've seen a YouTube video before of a guy using a self-propelled mower, put a stake right in the middle of the ground, tied probably about a 10-foot rope to it, started it, and let it work itself around in circles till it got back to the middle <laughs> to mow his yard. So, Who needs Bluetooth? Yeah, I don't think... <laughs> So like you're talking, you're talking like you're talking like, oh, yeah, it, like it, it, it would just work its way back right around to the post. <laughs> yeah, that's genius. And that's that's really genius. genius. <laughs> no, you know, if, if the guy had done that way earlier in in American city development, urban planning, we might have all ended up living on round lots. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. We'd all been living in round lots with like a our house would be on uh, one big post. You know? <laughs> well, like those, uh, you know, like you have those, like a, uh, uh, what do they call them? Uh, look, well, look like a pole barn, but you know, you got those houses like in the Everglades, they're up on stilts, right? Oh, on like, stilts. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a house on one post somewhere. Uh, what, yeah, it's called a birdhouse. It's in my backyard. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Kelly, did you go? Um, Kelly or Jen, if you go to my Instagram, because I really want to show this picture to Josh, and I'm, and I'm losing, I'm losing track of things here in my brain, trying to find this picture. But if you go to my Instagram and kind of go down to where you see, like, um, well, you'll see these things. You can see like the Spock coffee cup, and then uh -huh. that skull, and then this one that you can't really see is the cupcake. But anyway. uh, please hold. Please hold. <laughs> So, By so the way, um, I have to ask you, Wes, um, what is with the up down that's behind you? What what is that? It's a lamp. Oh. But yeah, but I mean, did you did you put up down on it, or was it already on it? No, it's already on it, man. I'm in a I'm in a here. I'll spin my I'll spin my I'll spin my little setup around for you. I have the cup. I have the cupcake. <laughs> That's my. Oh, it's like ho it's like hotels. dot com. <laughs> it is. That's my right. Right. Everybody just got busy. People throwing up everywhere. You have oh, yeah. the you have the Instagram thing? Yeah. Just just do a Google search. West Smith Cupcake Cupcake Instagram. Because right. it won't let me do a link. Oh, hey, that's JP. that's funny that 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 that's all you had to do. But well, um. Do hashtag. Hey, so the way I here, while she's doing that, while, while she's doing that, while, the way I got the way I got in this room. By the way, this is this is I got this is one of my uh, what you, shout outs. Shout out to uh, Lufthansa because they they um the coming out of Houston, I was coming from Houston to Frankfurt and Frankfurt to India, and so coming out of Houston there were some serious weather delays, and then over the course of the nine or ten hour flight, it it, it got worse. Um, just from the backup and everything taken off. Anyway, so nonetheless, I missed the connecting flight here in Frankfurt, which is why I'm here. 
and um and Lufthansa was awesome. I went over there and they uh they were like they had a couple options for me because the the flight connection had already been missed and um but they didn't have anything else today that was going direct like my original nonstop flight from here and then I was just like well, could I just take the same flight tomorrow? Does it go daily? And they're like, oh, yeah. They're like, if you're willing, if you're not in a hurry, they're like, um, yeah, we, you know, we can give you a food voucher for meals and uh, a lunch here at the airport and a free hotel and a shuttle. And I was like, so that's why, so that's why, I'm, sure. that's why I'm sitting here with this behind us. But um, That's a sweet lamp. But anyway. Uh, yeah, will that, fit, will that fit in your bag? Can you bring it home to me? <laughs> That. Can you guys see that? Josh, you can forever come back to this video in the in the in the big shoveled world of YouTube and, and find this. But um hey outside of um is, we were talking is. we were talking yeah. non oh you got it? You see it? Oh Jed's got oh Jed's got it, yeah, there you go. Play Get it. the hell out of here. Really? <laughs> Wait, don't talk. <laughs> It's moving? Yeah. Oh, I'm so trading my truck in for that thing. <laughs> Jesus. Hi, you Ashton. You see all the Hi. dust? Hi, I Ashton. Dusty. It's crazy. Sorry, guys. So, it, my, it, this is my daughter. She just wanted to say hi. Uh, hi. 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 Aw. Special guest. Do you have any shout outs? Do you have any friends you want to say hi to? <laughs> Not your son. That's a thing. <laughs> all good. All good. Hey, well, uh, I I went into the uh, I went into the non music area when we were talking about food and stuff, but I, I missed a couple other things. I I uh, always like give people opportunity to share. Um, what do you do outside of music in terms of work? If if that's stuff that you really you know. Some people aren't very interested, but if you are interested and, and want to share it, I'm always interested in what people do. Um, you know, my 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 non-music background has always pretty much been either uh, construction industry or technology, um, doing tech work, programming kind of stuff. So I don't know. Um, I think. What else are y'all up to outside of music? Well, if you'd like. As, to share. As, as far as work, I mean, I have a I do have a background in construction. Um, it, it's hard to describe. Uh, <laughs> exactly what I do. Um, hang, hang. You don't do anything. Sorry, I got a squiggler on my lap. She's just squiggling. <laughs> um, <laughs> the um, the easiest thing. I work out at a power plant out here, um, nice. and for the coal fire, uh, we help assist. Ash, you guys sit still, baby girl. Um, we help assist in the coal fire industry. Uh, basically, our company. Um, other than other than that, <laughs> other <laughs> she, coal. You, is coal is coal uh, processed in Florida? Is that a big industry there? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, it's down. Uh, ugh, hang on. All right, Ash. Sorry. What just happened? My kid's trying to be a YouTube sensation. Hang on. <laughs> perfect. perfect. It's good that we need all the help we can get. Maybe we can get it's a whole different demographic. See, I'm, you know, and I, I know this is going to be a spinoff of this subject, but I have net. I don't know if any of y'all have kids. Y'all have kids, right? No. Yes. No. Yeah. None. None. Lucky bastard, don't have any. Um, <laughs> the uh, they are getting into watching videos of other kids opening toys. It is the strangest thing I've ever really? seen. Yeah, it's no, like right. it's it's their parents videotaping their kid opening a toy that they bought I and other kids that. watch it and it's just it really blows watch that. I, I don't know maybe maybe it's because they want it I'm assuming I guess. I'm excited so do you, find, do you find that that do you find that that leads them to then want the toys or is it more like or is it maybe the opposite where they're like oh <laughs> the opening is done I don't need it anymore I, I hope that's it so I ain't got to buy no more toys <laughs> I got you, brother. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. He's picking the devil. <laughs> Taking over. What you, I just didn't know. I'm sorry. I learned a bunch of things right there. My brain's on overprocess. I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I mean, I think your energy is big everywhere, but I didn't know that um, particularly coal was 
and the coal processing industry was big in Florida, but uh, I knew they had a lot of limestone there. Um, I had some experience with that in the past. And then, um, and Nikki, what about you? Uh, I think massage therapy, did I get that right? Massage therapy. I've been uh, doing massage therapy for actually this month will be nine years. So I work at a two different uh, chiropractic and rehabilitation centers. Um, so it's mostly like car accident patients and uh, sports or athletes. And I do that five days a week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's definitely different than probably, uh, well, it'll help me understand that's probably definitely different than like, um, you know, going to get a sports massage or something after a marathon or maybe there's some shared shared, uh, you know, uh, skill sets there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the type of work I do is, is much different than like going to a spa and having like a one hour relaxation with right. and stuff like that. You know, um, a lot of my patients are fresh out of a car accident. Majority of my patients are. So it's a lot of, you know, people with herniations and bulges and, you know, oh. so even do a simple function of lifting an arm. So it's like rehabilitation, you know, and getting them back to their normal life. And um, a session with me is not the most relaxing because I actually make my patients work. <laughs> um, so you're going to be doing a lot of stretching and Ooh, moving. Oh, baby. Why does that? I don't know. I think I saw RuPaul in a magazine. Sorry. That, I, not to make, like, remind me of that song. But, um, yeah, so that's like that's like the, the word therapy is no joke in, in, in your uh, in your your career description there. That's it's not like uh, just going to a massage. You know, I mean, not that that isn't also um, a lot to learn and, and do that. I know some people probably spend their whole lifetime doing um, uh, sauna, you know, spa relaxation type massage as well. But but you're um, I just didn't know I didn't know which or what you were into. So. Um, yeah, that's yeah it's very, very in detail of knowing your muscles and functions of muscles and, you know, uh, movement. Do you end up working with physicians? Like, do you, does that, it sounds to me like it kind of, is, there's some yeah. shared, a lot of I shared. I work with uh, chiropractors, mostly chiropractors, and then there's an MD in one of the other offices I'm in. I'm in two different offices. And right. so I also do, like, chiropractic assisting. It's kind of putting them on different machines and doing like the TENS unit with heat and ultrasound and basic stuff like that. Well, that said, what, what, uh, do you, do you, from, from your experience, um, I've always had pretty good experience just going like, like the more like, uh, sports massage type stuff, but, um, they seem to help, but is that, you know, they'll, they'll always tell you like go on a regular basis, you know, uh, to do those kinds of things. Of course, that can cost a lot of money. Um, right. But but even with sort of the sports massage type stuff, I mean, is that is that is that kind of true? I mean, in your opinion, is that is it useful for people in general to go and kind of get their their muscles worked out? I, I think it's a like a health benefit for anyone. I mean, just because just depending on your type of job or how you sit on a couch daily, your postures you know create muscle spasms. You know, you can, if you're in the construction business, I'm sure that you've had some wear and tear on you just from the physical stuff that you do every day. Yeah. Um, and then pushing even that, someone pushing, that, like, pushing that pencil and typing on a keyboard. No, yeah. I, did, I did field work. I, I, <laughs> yes, I got you. Yeah, and then people that sit at a desk all day, you know, their shoulders are always hunched and their neck is forward. So just basic posture stuff. And then even myself, like, just doing therapy all day, like, I... I try to get a massage every two weeks just to keep, you know, keep it manageable to physically be okay. You know, I, I think it's a health benefit for just basically anyone. Well, now I'm so I'm so I'm resold on it again because yeah, I run a lot. That's kind of probably the thing I do the most. I run a lot, and uh, and it definitely, uh, you know, you, you start to get knots and things and all that stuff. So clearly not my expertise, but. It reminded me. And traveling, sitting on an airplane, man, sitting on an airplane for nine hours and then like a two hour. Yeah, everyone's like stretching. And... What's that? I said everyone's like stretching now. <laughs> yeah, I got the whole. We're doing a group workout. We're gonna turn the variety. Of... 
the variety show today is going to end with his attendance. <laughs> what kind of workout is that, man? No, what are you doing, Wes? <laughs> I don't care about Wu-Tang. anybody. Else. Oh, Wu Tang! What are you showing us? What are you showing us? Work it out. This is uh, we're coming to the yeah. Well, I was saving this for the I was saving this for close to the end today because um because we're close to the end. Or we, we can we can wrap things soon, but um, uh, I thought I'd give you opportunity. I I, I like socks. Some people say I have a problem with socks. <laughs> yep. These are these are today's socks. You I just to took it off. Oh, I'm digging them. It's too warm in here. I, I always wear I always wear mismatching socks for some reason, purposely. Yeah. What you got? Yeah. Anybody got it? Anybody got it? <laughs> Anybody got anything exciting on their feet before we before we get out of here? Yeah, I'm not showing you my feet. No offense. <laughs> we're, we, we're, we're getting closer, Wes, but I don't think we're that close yet. Yeah, I don't have cool socks. I'm sure your daughter cool socks, but I'll send you the I'll send you the website for cool socks. Right. Um, I do want to well, say though, before before we like wrap up, just some releases that we have coming up. I was about uh, to ask. Please do. Oh. <laughs> um, so March 14th as well we have the remix for Psydog and Bradley Drop of Gonna Be Mine okay. um, that's, all, that's coming out on Doggy Dog Records with okay. remixes by um, Seth Foe, KMFX KL2 who am I missing? Us? Us? <laughs> there's someone else on it? I can't remember yeah there's and one then, um, and then we just did an original for Rob as well called Flip Mode. And I'm not exactly sure on the release date for that. That's an original. And then we've actually started working on more originals ourselves. Um, we're going to try to put out like a little mini, mini Fat Kids album. Nikki, that's uh, on Doggy Dog as well? Those are all on Doggy Dog? Uh, the Flip Mode and Going to Be Mine is, is all Doggy Dog records. And then... Uh, the originals that we're doing for our own album, we're going to release um, under ourselves. Yeah, with, we're, uh, we're, Rob, Rob, yeah. Rob analyzed from Jambana. Yeah, oh, we're man. we're probably going to target like a later, uh, later in the month or later in this year. Uh, for well, that's a that's a uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm not rushing out of here, but I'm glad you brought that up actually because that's an interesting topic. Is <laughs> Going back to the music side of things, I, I think it's an interesting topic, like the way that music is being released these days obviously has changed immensely, of course, since vinyl or CD or whatever, but even now it's all pretty much digital and you're talking about doing an album, so what, in your mind, kind of like what made you decide or what led you to kind of decide to do an album or a longer, you know, sort of... Um, set of tracks, I guess. It's kind of a, a cohesive, you know, sort of package kind of thing, right? Um, to be album. honest, we've always just constantly are getting hit up for remixes. If you look at most of our releases, they are remixes. Okay. That we never just focus on originals. Guilty. And we keep saying, what's that? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then someone like you know. Smith comes along and asks us to do a remix, and we have to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, no. Awesome. No, I, really, I, I, I will say I really appreciate it, it was a, and it's a great track, it's still a great track. Thank you, I appreciate thank that. Um, that was on, an honor to do that for you as well, so thank you. Um, so it's we kind of just want to finally, finally take the time to just focus on originals and kind of just, since we are separate, it's a lot different working on music sitting next to someone you know, so it's a lot of, you know, me working on it alone and then sending it to him and then him working on it and then just going back and forth, which I've noticed is definitely changing our sound. Um, so I think it would be cool to just focus on just doing straight originals and do an album and just see how, how it plays out and how it goes. Amen. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's that's the best part, you know. Oh, there's so much bad things about being away from you, Nick. I miss you. Um <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you know, when when you are apart and you do have to wind up sending tracks back and forth, it really lets each person focus on their individual sound. That you know what I mean. Uh, and then okay. when you then when you put them both together and we both start sending, okay, here's mine. You listen to it. And here's yours. And then you open it up. And it's like, damn. Now we're cooking. Now yeah, we're getting this whole new. 
whole new vibe and sound, you know, than what people are used to hearing with it. And it, it's great. Yeah. It, it, it yeah, that's very up. different when you think about sitting with somebody and working, you know, real time for lack of a better word, and you you tend to make compromises maybe more than 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 you and. And not that they end up bad, you just tend to make compromises the way humans work together, right? But if you're separate, like you're saying, that's an interesting point. You, you have, you're still gonna, you're still gonna obviously have your your say and influences, but you're gonna sit there and do the work and then send it back to somebody. So it's kind of like you do more of what's in your mind without really even knowing what the compromise might be, right? Exactly. But before, exactly. before you, you know, before you click the buttons and whatnot. Right. That's interesting. That's cool. Have you seen um, on that note, and 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 then wrapping up, um, have you seen uh, or tried any of those of the kind of collaborative? Um, I can't remember the name of the one right now. I think it's mostly focused on Ableton, but it may work with other um, DAWs as well, other um, other workstation products. But uh, does anyone know the name of that? That uh, it's like a collaboration thing for Ableton, where you can actually upload the project and all of the you know uh, related files. Um, the, um, what is and, that? And I think you can work like through a browser, like literally work through a browser. Yeah, actually, Chronic, DJ Chronic was telling us about that, and I think uh, it might it might be on my computer. I don't even. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm horrible. Nobody, nobody knows what it is. You, you, you got guys. me. I'm not. I'm not even gonna like try I, this. I, I'm I just gonna play. I don't know. Like file sharing, right? For Ableton, is that basically what it is? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is. Yeah. So essentially, it's file sharing. I haven't used it, so I don't know. But I'm just saying, essentially, it's file sharing. But it's it's intended to be so that you can work, you know, more like, like at the same time with somebody else, kind of like we're doing right now. Right. But it's but it's just tailored towards the you know sort of the higher I guess um, bandwidth or rendering demands that you would have in a in mm -hmm. a uh, audio. And I've even seen video projects. I've just seen demos of it. I haven't ever used it. So I was just curious. Um, if you, if you tried that, but it'd be interesting if uh, you ever get into that. It could just could be one of those cool things that that technology blows our minds and and, and helps us do. So, Kelly, you have something you want to do before you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. What you got? What you got, Bob? Oh, by the way, by the way, for anybody who was we we tried uh, we did a needle drop section one time and then that's the only time we've ever had any copyright problems obviously because <laughs> nobody cares about us talking for an hour an hour and a half but uh, the one time we did like a little needle drop thing to do some demos and promos and then YouTube flags the video and Kelly and I had to spend like three days like trying to sort out you know <laughs> getting getting that flag uh, out of the video so that we didn't have to just delete the show. Yeah, so I, I picked a song last week and it and it and it flagged it and we I, what did we put Old McDonald over it? I think it was Old McDonald, <laughs> it, which, which, which is great. So I, you can imagine. So we're talking like this and it's like, well, here's the song and it'd be like and it'd just be like Old McDonald, which it was originally a drum and bass song that was really good. But um, yeah, can you unmute G Geo? I think he he's on there too. Yeah, oh yeah, to say. Yeah. So we do have a needle drop, and it and it's um it's a really good song, and we're all gonna remix it together. We've talked about this uh, beforehand, and we're gonna start it like this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. But who's counting? Happy birthday, Wes. We all love you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hey, you know, technically it's my birthday hey. right now. I'm in Germany. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> hey. Well, Wait, thank you very you much. Yo, you, you muted. Thank, thank you very much, everyone who did and didn't. Thank you very much, everyone who did. Happy and birthday, did. Wes. Thank you, my man. Thank you, my man, for coming in. I appreciate it. I really do. But, hey, listen, so that said... That said, it is – we might have lost somebody. Anyway, that said, it is 4 a.m. here in lovely Frankfurt, and I am going to uh, chill out for a little bit and then go run and then go hop to the airport and fly on out. But, um, but uh, hey, Josh and Nikki, you're both still here? Yeah. Of course. Awesome. Perry White's there. But, uh, listen, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, coming over here and talking about some stuff and uh, – a little bit of some laughs and some and some serious things. Hopefully, uh, anybody listening um, 
you know, got uh, something out of it today and I had a little fun and really appreciate you guys taking the time to to uh, to put a hold on whatever it is you're doing and come join us and hang out. All right. Well, it's definitely Thanks our pleasure. pleasure. It was a it was a it was a fun show. <laughs> she, she no. No. That's sad. That said, we have our sign off. I don't uh, we're, uh, we're prepped. We're good. I just gonna count it off. Uh, three, two, one, stay. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks everybody. Peace. See you on the other side.